Hello and welcome to our unit on inequalities. We will look to explore as many avenues of inequalities as we can to give you a good grasp of how they fill an important role in our math understanding. Before we do, let's put a bit of context to this unit and your journey through math so far. Sometimes it's easy to lose sight of the big picture as you get deep into the details. It's a can't see the forest for the trees kind of scenario. Just for a moment, go way back to perhaps your first introduction to math. Like learning your ABCs, counting was a big part of your first foray into the language of math. At every opportunity, someone was giving you different objects and repeating, one, two, three. It's likely you could count numbers long before you actually knew what they meant. But you still got quite a positive response when you could count ten fingers for your adoring audience. You are being introduced to the idea that math exists to express what we observe in our world. Seeing quantities of things like ladybugs was the beginning of your math journey. Then, connecting an abstract symbol like the squiggles that form a three to mean three things was a big step. And writing such a symbol was no small feat either. By writing numbers, you were expressing real things with symbols. This took the formation of many new brain connections, but you worked it out. You learn to combine objects too. When you have three things and you combine two more, you have five things. New symbols were needed to express this event. A plus sign. Now you could express a real life observation with your newly learned symbols. Your first math expressions. And then came the equal sign. Now we were relating two math expressions to be the same or equal, your first math equation. And soon you were able to do this without all that fruit, as symbols could express the concept of addition and things being equal. Your first equations were your introduction to the idea that what is to the left of the equal sign has the same value as that to the right. Each new concept came with its own struggles like when you met algebra for the first time, and you were challenged once again. Why are there letters in math, you wondered. The introduction of unknown values was needed to create math expressions and equations that could describe increasingly complex observations. Again, confusing at first, but you conquered this as well. A single variable could be written to have a single solution, like 2x plus 3 equals 7, subtract 3 from both sides, Divide each side by 2, and we have our solution. There's something satisfying in making the x a real value. The solution can be shown visibly when placed on a number line. Two variables show a relationship that creates a linear equation, which we can summarize as a line on a Cartesian plane. When powers are introduced, quadratic equations are created. An equation with two variables like this one a equals pi r squared, tells us that the meaning of one variable, in this case a, is dependent on the value of r. These common and familiar equations get the distinction of being formulas. Although equations have certainly been the focus of your math, we continue to explore expressions like polynomials as well. Terms strung together with addition or subtraction, but no equal sign. Our goal with polynomials is to get good at looking for ways to manipulate the terms, to simplify or rearrange the expressions. But they are not written as equations, so they are not solved. For example, we look for like terms. Terms we notice have identical variable parts we can add or subtract. Or expand polynomials where multiplication is involved. Or factor them. Just different arrangements where the meaning of the expression is the same. So, now that you are comfortable with solving equations and simplifying expressions, we get to once again learn something new, as our solutions are often far from exact. What do we do when expressions are not equal? As you've likely guessed, we have another way to describe these observations. Inequalities are the tool we have to fulfill this category, where our solutions can range from none to infinite. You have seen the symbols before, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, 
or just straight up not equal to. This is like when you need to be a certain height to go on a ride. Your height must be at least 135 centimeters, which means equal to or greater than. Or not too small or too tall. H is greater than or equal to tall enough, but less than or equal to too tall. Often our solutions are ranges of possibilities that depend on varying factors. Inequalities give us an avenue to describe these mathematically. Math is a language that helps us express what we see in concise ways. It relates things that are equal and not equal. It helps us make sense of our world. Hopefully you're recognizing that a certain amount of discomfort is an important part of learning some of these new concepts. The challenges are what fuel new connections and push us to grow. What is awkward at first becomes comfortable when we allow ourselves to accept new ideas and work hard to learn new things. Understanding makes our learning meaningful and more pleasurable. Certainly the details of your math journey are important. But take a moment to back away and get a broader perspective when time permits. We'll extend our understanding beyond expressions and equations next as we explore inequalities in more depth.